that water all over me oopsie hi guys it's mandy and in this video today we are going to go over the games that i have beaten the games that i'm currently playing in a weird segment which is the game that i dropped i rarely drop games so I had to put this one in its own category. All right, so while this pile does look daunting, I could tell you that I beat a lot of games this month. You know, gotta give yourself some uh, back claps for that because it's hard to beat games nowadays, I don't know. All right, now onto the games that I've beaten. Now the first game I have is Triangle Strategy. Now I'm doing a full review for this. It is coming out next week, so look forward to it so you can hear my thoughts about this game. But nonetheless, it was a contentious game in my mind and I have a lot of words to say about it so please look forward to the review if you're interested. It was my most anticipated game of 2022 so I have a lot of thoughts and I'll leave it at that but I did beat it. I beat it twice actually so double beat yay. Alright and the next game I beat is Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Now I beat the main game. I'm on the post game which surprisingly is really really hard but it's still a fun time. I pick it up here, there, just to collect some Waddle Dees. But man, I love this game so much. It did exceed my expectations and more. I want more Kirby. Because the only bad thing about this game is that it was too short. Because I just wanted more of it. There was It was so good. So hopefully, you know, Nintendo has a Kirby The Forgotten Lands Part 2 or something going on because I want more Kirby games on the Switch and I want them now. Anyways, the next game I beat is Altir Sophie 2, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Dreams. Now I'm working on a review for this as well, though Triangle Strategy does come first. This game was just all I needed and more. It was like a warm blanket and some chamomile tea wrapped in one. Now there is some action in this game, but it's just so, so relaxing. The alchemy is just, you could get lost in just doing different things and collecting and Sophie herself and the characters. It's just so wholesome and just like I said, it's like a warm blanket with some chamomile tea. Th that's the best way to describe this game. Alright, and the last game I completed is Life is Strange True Colors. It was good. It was really good. The graphics look amazing. Um, I've seen the Switch graphics. Yeesh. <laughs> um, I guess there's a price to pay for portability. But anyways, I love this game. It was very heartwarming. Like, I could relate to Alex so much. While she does have the power of empathy to an extreme ability, empathy itself is not a power. It is actually the capacity to feel other people's feelings. I mean, that's kind of in the word empathy. And a character in the game pointed out that your emotions are not your own. And that is like the definition of empathy because you could feel for people and you could take on their emotions so you could properly, you know, be there for them. But there is a drawback because your emotions are not your own. So on top of your emotions, you gotta deal with other people's emotions and it gets kind of cray cray in the head. But I love how they use it as a power because it's a power that a lot of people could strive for. I felt with Alex, and while I don't have a superpower where I can see other people's emotion in real time, I do get the same kind of vibes that people give off. So I guess I really empathized with her, which is, you know, part of the thing and a whole journey of finding a place where you belong really struck me really hard. So I'll leave this as a mini review because I'm not going to do a review of the game because I'm going to cry and I don't want to cry. So n nonetheless, if you like that type of storytelling, point and click kind of games, then this is up your alley. All right, so those are the games that I beat. I beat a lot of games, super proud, happy, accomplished. Now, on to the controversial game that I dropped. I rarely drop games, mostly because I pay for them and I don't want to waste my money. Even games that I didn't like as well, I kind of want to see it through. This one I had to drop cold turkey because I just couldn't take it anymore, and that is Elden Ring. So I want to take this time to kind of elaborate on what I meant in this tweet. So my tweet was, Elden Ring kind of sucks, and yes, I've played it enough to say it's way too overhyped, so here's my take, besides the easy mode debate, so I'm not talking about the difficulty. 
My first point was the game isn't really well designed, especially with side quests. Number two, open world is boring. Number three, the story is non-existent. And number four, it's very subjective. It's not fun. All right, so that tickled a lot of feathers with that tweet. So the part where I said the game is not well designed, especially with side quests, is the fact that the side quests are really vague. Like, I remember this guy was telling me where to go, like, in directions, like, turn right, turn left, make a, a jump, and drop in the floor. And it was very vague because I didn't know where he was talking about. It doesn't have a quest log, so it doesn't paraphrase what he said so you could look at it while you're trying to look for it. No. You have to memorize what he said or look online at a walkthrough or something to be able to figure out what he was talking about. To me, that's bad design because how is someone supposed to remember that? Like literally, how is someone supposed to remember that? It's just the quest, the way they're set up, it's very, very unorganized and I can see myself, actually I know that I forgot a majority of them. Now, the second one, the world is boring. By that, there's a ton of enemies, so you're gonna be fighting, there's enemies everywhere, you're good on that. But when I say boring, I meant like there's no cities, there's no towns, there's no just people walking around without wanting to kill you. The only place where there's a lot of NPCs is the war room or whatever it's called. But we're all just like bunched up in one room. There's an open world outside. Make a, a town or something. Make it more interesting other than enemies attacking you. That gets kind of boring. Now my next point is the story is non-existent. So the point where I say non-existent, I take back because there is a story there. It's just really bad. Or badly handled, in my opinion. I didn't just not play it and say I hate it. I did play it and then said I hate it. I did give it a chance. So I respect a lot of people's opinion on the game and why they love it. I could see the lore in some aspects because, yeah, it was kind of addicting at some point. But... It just wasn't a game for me. While we do get in spats about which game is what or who scored higher, I love to see the diversity in gaming from really hard ones to really easy ones, ones that feel like a blanket with chamomile tea while the other one feels like a bear trap. So that's my say on Elden Ring. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it, I just wanted to elaborate on my points there. Now moving on to the games that I'm currently playing. Number one is... A ten hut Monster Hunter Rise. Now I'm doing this thing on Discord called Monster Hunter Bootcamp to get ready for Sunrise or the new DLC Sunset Sunrise Sunbreak. There we go. So we are just playing Monster Hunter with our Sensei with the. So we are enjoying Monster Hunter, playing it, getting good gear and stuff. With the help of my senpai, sensei, I, I don't know, Kendo, he is the master of Monster Hunter. He could teach you how to play, he could teach you what stuff to wear, he is really good. I'm using a gun weapon, what do I do? You stay the f away and, and, and hit the head. You have no defense. I'm trying to be a hero. <laughs> Always go into a hunt with a wish list as to not waste time. Are you broke? Charlie uh, users, y'all gotta do quantum physics to deal the same damage as a great sword user. <laughs> Hit the head, oh my god, stop trying to be the coolest thing out there. So I recommend you hit up my Discord if you want to join Monster Hunter Boot Camp so you can get ready for some break. And the next game I'm currently playing is Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I love this game so much. It is so, so nice. And I don't see this a lot on cozy lists or anything, but this is definitely a cozy game. And the next game I'm currently playing is Mass Effect The Legendary Edition, more specifically Mass Effect 3. I am currently streaming this. Now, I've been following this game since Mass Effect 1, 2, and now three. I have the whole playlist if you want to check those out to see the adventure. And I just like it, especially when the characters you form bonds in different games show up and you're like, oh, bring it in, bring it in. The whole gang's back together kind of vibe. And it's really fun. In Mass Effect 3, I feel like they kind of up the difficulty 
because it's kind of harder than the other two but I am still slaying with the sniper and I love it so I can't wait to continue this adventure with you guys. So clearly I couldn't get enough Atelier so I went into the next game in the Mysterious Trilogy and that is Atelier Ferris. So far it's different so I really can't wait where this adventure goes in the Mysterious Trilogy. So tell me in the comments below what games have you been playing or what games have you beaten in this past month or few months. I love to hear from you guys. If you like this video and would love to see more, please hit that like button and also please hit that subscribe button. On our way to 5k, let's go, let's do this by the end of the year. You can find me on my Twitter at Mandy Lee Plays. Also, feel free to join the Discord in the description down below. With all that being said, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day and as always, play a good game. Peace be.